Welcome to the bold analysis, ladies and gentlemen. There is something I have been saying in this channel and I will not get tired of repeating it. At least someone will hear. In journalism, you're allowed to ask a question a million times if you can get the answer because the more the, your guest is not answering it, the objective is still achieved. And I've been saying that at least even if Kenya Kwanzaa is inconsistent in other areas, but on such critical matter of addressing the plight of Kenyans, you need to be very consistent. Because the protests that have been experienced in this country for the last one month have even threatened to end political careers of senior politicians in this country. And let me veer off a bit and say, in crisis communication, probably 101, communication 101, you need to pick one strategy and use that. You need to communicate one thing. You evaluate, you get the feedback, then you react, you act following what may be the reception of the first strategy. And what I'm saying is the government of President Trudeau is in some crisis. You need to choose. Is it either Ford Foundation or Uhuru Kenyatta or the media and so? Because you can't have both. If you believe someone is behind the protest, you must show those who are must prove. Look at this story. I look at this headline. Four senior figures wanted by government over protests. I will delve deep into this article because one of the things they're saying is a close associate of former President Uhuru Kenyatta. But before I look at it, I want to say this. We cannot be such simplistic to such a to this critical matter because if ending protest is as simple as arresting some four or three people at some ten people. If President Trudeau and the intelligence know well that if I arrest so and so and so and prosecute them, the protest will end because they're the people that are financing it, then the protest would, would not even have lasted for even a week. These financiers would have been arrested after 18th. Maybe. Then that would have stopped. So, this has, this has become, it could be, and, and let me give President Ruto some credit, it could be, yes, there are some people that you think are funding. But now, it's beyond those people you might call those anonymous financiers. That movement and that protest has now become in the minds of people. It's now been taken over. Even the financial, even if that financial, I think even that financial could be broke. Because now what's happening you cannot really look into it. And I'm saying this because I want to look at that intelligence, uh, that story about intelligence report. Before I look at it, just to confirm to you and explain, I, I like when Kasmal was speaking in one of the TV interviews, and he's saying things that we've been saying are the real issues about the Gen Z. This will simplify the whole thing here. Very preposterous. <laughs> In, in our approach to this discussion. And people do not seem to understand what the young people mean by Ruto must go. I do not know why, why, why that is very difficult to understand. We've chosen that as the hashtag to push because we believe that the government currently is corrupt, it lacks accountability, no transparency, and it hires on cronism. When we say Ruto must go, I do not know why people believe that it is only the person William Ruto. We are talking about the presidency. So, because the political class has failed us countless times, what we are now saying is, please rush that reconstitutional process. Because even if you, when you saw um, uh, Right Honorable Raila's uh, whatever he put out, he does not address this movement as a Gen Z movement. Suddenly, it becomes an inclusive movement. And what consistently we've said, the political class has taken our relived reality and used it as talking points. 
So now they've taken whatever it is that we've been putting out on social media and they're going to say them in chambers so for, for them to sound cool, for them to gain political mileage. Because before we started speaking, they never were saying these things. What we are trying to do is to drain the swamp and clean up whatever we have, whatever this rot is we have administratively. We want that entire presidency to go if they will not shape up. And we are willing to have a caretaker government to the speaker take over 60 days and we go into a fresh election. A fresh el general election is cheaper than the amount of money we lose to corruption in a week in this country. That is why I will not take this nonsense from the political class trying to lie to us that the country is going to be in, in, in shambles while they are already systemically killing us already. Part of what we've asked for is goodwill. And for us, it is very easy. We've never clamored for power. We've already told the president, as a show of goodwill, release us unconditionally. Let the people, the killer cops who have, cons and we will see them tomorrow because we saw them last week on Thursday. Get those people off. When a police officer is attacking me like a bandit, I do not understand what that is about. We well, want those pain points to be addressed. We are not here to play politics. We are not here to try and ask, so who is vying for what? And I feel like the media is doing an unfair job trying to box this into the Kawaida tribal politics because that is how uh -huh. the youth have consistently been locked out of these broad-based discussions. I have not once seen any youth bodies talked to, but civil societies already received uh, writings from external organizations to ask them, how have you spent the money, instead of government writing directly to them. Curiously enough, the youth groups were not uh, addressed by, by those, by like Ford Foundation when we talk about it. It's a ploy to divide the country while they're out here talking about unity. They are consistently sowing division and deceit. That's Rebel what we're, we're talking about. You know, it's believed that you know, the, the remaining slots in you the know, cabinet. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I meant for Azimio. I have no, Is it time, I, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not privy to that information. That's on the level of uh, Raila Odinga <laughs> and uh, Ruto and the he's discussion. He's your party leader. But you know, he's my party leader, but I'm not privy to the discussions. I'm not on the table with that, on those discussions. But what I do understand is Raila has got the fact that Ruto has actually, uh, Kenya Kwanzaa has actually failed uh, to satisfy the populace. And don't forget, he also holds 50% of the population. So in, in, in that respect, when he comes in and says, I had a manifesto as well. You've not dealt very well with, uh, with uh, NHIF. You've not dealt very well with unemployment. Uh, you've not dealt very well with cost of living, which Azimio has always stood for. So if it means that I take a few of the government slots so that we can help you govern from within rather than from outside. But he's jumping it's the in same, after we have been same, killed, right, Honorable so yeah, Pasaris. No, the thing is, yes, uh, uh, you know what I would like, as, as we've agreed, to see your list of, uh, of, of uh, uh, proposed names. So we names. should anticipate right? to see I some think, Azimio I think, members I think the government the right cabinet. now, the government right now, Ruto needs to have the government in place. You know, I, I, I heard Kasmas here say, talking about the fact that, oh, we've managed in the last two weeks without, without CSS. Our, our legislation, our constitution cannot work without the CSS. So, in the Pasadis, you've hinted so, at Azimio having some of its members as CSS. You, you, you know, no, I mean, that's what I'm seeing. That's what I'm, from, that's, from, within. from within. Uh, from within. You see, the thing is, if, if, if for instance, uh, Baba had, had his own manifesto but this was and not he talked about revolution. clustering, it wasn't our revolution, absolutely. That's but don't forget, but don't forget. Don't, they jump no, in? Yeah, yeah, you see, the thing is, it's true, but you see, when you're faceless, when you're leaderless, when you're when you're tribeless and when you, you, you know, no, and formless, okay, so all those things, I would love it's Gen Z, I would love Gen Z to identify its face. No way. And then we at the do same not time, need to identify okay, our face because we've us, asked you to identify us, the face of corruption all right. and so you have not. Azimio is hijacking the Gen no, no, Z's No, 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 I don't believe that Azimio is hijacking, but Baba, but don't this forget, is not don't forget, even those Gen Z's, you know, and I keep telling people, I keep telling people that ODM was incorporated in 2005. All right. If you look at the average age of ODM, it's 19.5, which is actually covering so and representing all the agencies. So, Ruto's Gen Z's. problems will be solved right. by having as me on No, board. I believe that Ruto's problems will be solved by actually listening to the constructive criticism of of Gen Z's. But we, have we been need to but put. We need to first of all release. You know, all the demands that they've made are really reasonable. All right, and they need to be dealt with. But the fact is, the unreasonable part of the demands of Gen Z's is to paralyze the economy every week, what and by so doing, by, so, by so doing, they're actually messing up the country. Right now, Kenya was doing so well in terms of hosting conferences. But you were also right? doing so well in terms no, of corruption. No, no, the they're thing peaceful is, while you, know, they, they, you know what? The problem is, I, I was in ODM. You know, recently when we came into uh, into uh, government again, when we when we when we government was formed in 2022. 
the ODA was still not satisfied and they were going on the streets. I couldn't get my heart to go on the streets because I saw what the cost of that in 2017 and I do not want to see a life loss. So I didn't want that. But the difference that. here so is I that the Gen Z's they are went, peaceful. They went peacefully and I'll tell you one thing, that is something we have to look at as a country. We have to look at that as a country. And I really want to see accountability because at the end of the day, if you, if you send uh, police with live ammunition to a protest, Right? Then you're obviously going to have people mm -hmm. killed. Gikonyo. And that is wrong. As yeah. we begin yeah. to end up, Gikonyo, right. you know, a your submissions on this. On this, just a quick one. If you were in ODM and now are aligned to Kenya Kwanzaa, you need to go back to your electorate. I am not aligned. You need, to, you need to go back to your electorate because you were voted in as on ODM. ODM and you're not functioning oh, as ODM. That's no. a different but issue. You're, 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 she has that's to a, understand. When, no, you, no, when you take hold on. of office, that's a different you represent issue. everybody. I don't just represent ODM. When I took my oath of office as the woman representative, um, I represent all that's a the different citizens. issues yes, and not one where the, the citizens, not the, the constituents need yeah. to act. Yeah. The issue we are dealing with is the tumbocracy. Right? I'll use a very simple term, tumbocracy. It's this, my turn to eat. And the Gen Z have come out and are re have rejected the tumbocracy. And they've given recommendations on what needs to be done. Those recommendations aren't even comprehensive, but there are some initial actions. My question is, other than dissolve, and it was optical, because then he reappointed some, other than dissolve the co cabinet, why has William Ruto not acted on those other demands of accountability? Because if he had, the temperatures would have assuaged. But instead, he continues to fan the flames. The second, we have a right to protest. Why has William Ruto sanctioned um, the use of light bullets, tear gas canisters. I've been on the streets twice. The protesters are peaceful. Actually, you don't feel insecure at all. But they were infiltrated <laughs> on the basis of political mobilization. We are running out of time. Why, why has our uh, NIS and DCI not dealt with those politicians? Because um, violence, uh, political violence, is instigated by our political leaders. Yeah. And that needs to be dealt with. <laughs> Last thing. I do agree that Gen Z's need to move to the next level. Mm. There is a gap. Mm. They need to actually get alliances with other strong movements. They need to put some faces because their space is now being hijacked by politicians because well, that's what politicians mm -hmm. do. Kasmal, even as we wind up in a minute, can we? Now, um, I've, I've loved that debate and you would understand Basaris is struggling to explain and defend <laughs> the fact that I, I like, you know, I like that they're asking, and I've been, I've been saying this, eh? ODM should give the country a break. This was not their revolution. Their revolution was the 2023-2023, and it ended up in some sort of a part bipartisan talks that never produced anything. So, with all due respect, I've listened to what Pasaris is saying there. Pasaris has some, some very interesting argument that, because Ruta has failed to implement his policies, so, and, and Raila has 50-50 share of the county in terms of support, which I, I totally agree. In fact, Raila has more. So Raila is going to donate, is going to produce some people to go to the cabinet. Then through that, probably things are going to change. So I ask, uh, the cabinet secretary, Raila is going to donate one man, probably as a cabinet secretary. Let's say, get for those four cabinet secretaries. The government is a system. A cabinet secretary doesn't make a decision as himself on matters budget, on matters policy, on matters projects. It's a whole system that is still led by President Ruto. So I, I am a bit lost in the middle of all that. And um, I, I think I was playing it so that you understand the context of what exactly the country is talking about. And Mr. Politician is really not really in this story. Now... Back to this. Now, th whatever you've had is the discussion. And I, I was playing that so that you understand the concept, the, the, the context. That is the discussion. I want you to tally that with such a story. <coughs> such a weighty matter <coughs> that they're talking about even how governance and everything. Then someone says that he's looking for four people four figures who are around the protest. Do, do you think even the issues about how the protest, from even the politicians across both sides, are talking something different? And this is what the nation is reporting. Retired President um, 
Nation Africa has also established that other three other prominent individuals are also on the radar of security services after being linked to planning and funding anti-government protests. A controversial lawyer um, has rejected all attempts by the government to link him to an illegal campaign. The lawyer asked Nation to provide him with evidence the DC and NIS claim to have against him. Now, the other person is a relative of an influential family in Mount Kenya region. This person whose Hadith, and this is now Nation, I don't know, <laughs> this editor is saying, this person whose identity we have concealed for legal reasons is accused by the government of being one of the people who are fomenting anti-finance bill protests. I don't know whether people are still protesting about the finance bill. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even getting it. Another prominent figure is said to be in constant contact with him, attracting the attention of the intelligence service. He's one of the people under the microscope of the multi-agency team set up by government to investigate the financials of demonstrations. This investigative team includes other NAS, DCI, Economic Crime Unit, Financial Reporting System, and NAS. Also, government rather is a former state house figure during the Mwai Kibaki administration. The former Mwai Kibaki aide who now lives a quiet life away from the public eye has been linked by the NIS to the funding of the protests. A source familiar with the intelligence briefings told Nation Africa that this individual has been holding series of meetings in Nairobi with politicians from central region that are believed to be related to the youth protest. He is also the under investigation of the multi-agency team investigating the financials of the demos. I, now these are four people. There is also another group of investigators that are probing 16 NGOs that allegedly have been receiving funding to fuel the protest. Um, Ruto just did a tweet. The president Ruto just did a tweet. Um, just some few minutes, I think. I, I don't know whether I can get that that tweet for you. He just did a tweet. Um, I was just told. I'm just. I just want to look at what he said. There is something he said. Mm, yes. Oh, yeah. It, 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 be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ forgiven all of us. Now, mm -hmm. let me tell you something that you will actually buy and you actually understand that um, you cannot it's not simple before you even try looking for heads people that you think are sponsoring this and that you may need to question so what is what is their benefit and the consistent narrative is targeting uhuru kenyatta i saw this story Today, there was another fake newspaper headline that Uhuru Kenyatta is fronting Muhoho Kenyatta for presidency. I saw it in 2027. I saw it somewhere there. The story was revolved around Uhuru Kenyatta. The other day, uh, on Sunday, Nation did uh, an article. The same Nation did an article and said that uh, Raila flew to Dubai to meet Uhuru Kenyatta because, so that he can be dissuaded from the Ruto deal. Only I saw Pauline Jaroge later releasing a statement and saying that Uru has been leaving the U.S. for the last, like, one month or so. So, um, all this remains narratives and they remain probably slight propaganda because I do believe that the government has the machinery. Kenya Kwanza have the machinery. And instead of all these newspaper stories and headlines, we should see prosecution. I want to believe if there is someone who is paying a youth some money, then government has the ability of even tapping that M-Pesa transaction going to a group of some 1,000 youth somewhere, maybe even if they are receiving some 10,000, 5,000. Yeah, government has that ability. If they are receiving some cash and someone is donating the cash, the police and the intelligence are all over. They can be able to even arrest, probably they should even arrest some few people receiving the money. Without a trail of evidence showing 
people receiving cash. Or let's 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 try to argue that um, according to the hierarchy, maybe the leaders are receiving it. Probably those who are talking in Twitter. Then after receiving it, then how about those who are going to the street? You know, you will understand that we are chasing hot air and we're just deviating from the problem. And the sustained narrative on Uhuru Kenyatta is not new. It started with Rigadi Geshagwa. Until you remember the day Rigadi left, did a press briefing alongside his boss. That press, that's Tommy press briefing in Mombasa. When Rigadi said that, look here, the intelligence should stop saying that me and Uhuru Kenyatta are behind the protest. And he blamed the intelligence. From that press briefing by Rigadi, now they removed Rigadi from the mix. Now they have remained with Uhuru Kenyatta. So you will understand. And, and of course, a blame of Uhuru Kenyatta is sustained easily because Uhuru is not responding. And Uhuru is taking some silence. But why are Kenya Kwanza picking Uhuru Kenyatta for this blame narrative? I'm seeing some four objectives um, from this. Number one, I think the moment Raila Odinga walked out of Ruto deal, um, Ruto was thrown into some deep confusion. And two things happened. Um, yesterday, uh, Mbadi was in somewhere in Nyanza, in Homa Bay, and was saying that Luo Nyanza should pick, should pick whether to stay with Uhuru Kenyatta, to stay with uh, Raila to take a, a relationship with Uhuru Kenyatta, where Uhuru Kenyatta is taking them, or where Kalonzo is taking them, or William Ruto. So what is it? The bait was the direction Raila is going to take. Should Raila stick with Ruto? Should Raila go with uh, Kalonzo? Or should Raila go with Uhuru Kenyatta? My point here is, Raila should not go with either of all. Raila must stick with the people. Because the people have stuck with him for all the time in his political career. He has survived all. He's been losing elections. or not. He's been, of course, he's been missing to become the president even after successful elections because uh, he's, he's sticking with the people. So probably that is one of the reasons. And it is just slandering Uhuru Kenyatta on that ground so that the Mbadi camp will continue traversing. You'll get some chopper fueled and traversing Luo Nyanza and ODM zones telling them that Raila, they need to tell Raila to leave Uhuru Kenyatta so that they stick with William Ruto. The other second thing, I think, uh, the Ruto handlers are also driving a narrative that there is no problem. This, it, it is not about what you, you people are talking about. The problem here is Uhuru Kenyatta want to remove me from power. Because where will, how will someone argue if you hear that so-and-so is being arrested because of sponsoring protest? What would that understand? That so-and-so doesn't want me to be the president. And there is, you know, there is systematic that this narrative is being developed because the same nation was saying on Sunday that uh, Ruto, that Raila told Ruto, that Uhuru told, Ruto, told Raila that he would uh, surrender Mount Kenya to him so that he become president in 2027. And people are asking, so where were all those fabrications from? That's one thing. Ruto is not the problem. That's what they are driving at. They are solving Ruto from the whole blame. The other third understanding is someone wants to suppress and rather provoke what is the position of Uhuru Kenyatta in these protests. And it's not even important. You know, one thing they know is Uhuru Kenyatta is going to be a focal point in terms of maybe 2027 politics. And I think it's the old tired script of dissuading the members of the public from protests. Probably they have understood that after that cabinet slot, the tension is high, people are a bit more angered, and the numbers might still be high. So they're still employing the old strategies of dissuading the members of the public. I, my position still hold that we need to have a concrete. And if you are serious about crushing financials as the way to end the problem, if you want to believe that if you crush financials, then there will be no protest, then you need to, we need to see you arresting, prosecuting, taking to court, and full glare, of the media will cover. And if you believe that people are being given money, you need to show us transactions. Intelligence can intercept. 500,000 going to X number of people in this area. This, let us see all those people. Let us see that. But without it, 
I'm afraid they might not be able to get away with that narrative because the public are also vigilant and they are looking, they're asking the tough questions. So ladies and gentlemen, that is my take. Let's meet in the next.